Okay. I think we can start. Are we live already? Yeah, we're live. All right. I think we can start. Um, are you going to put my video? I'm not sure what's showing on YouTube at the moment. Uh. All right. I guess I can start. I hope you can hear me well. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Permapohet. Uh, this is a series of lectures about permaculture organized by the Finnish Permaculture Association to our members. Um, my name is Maria, and I'll be your host this evening. And before we start, I have some practical things to say. Today is the last lecture from a series of 12 that we have been doing weekly since the end of February. And I really want to thank everyone involved in the organization, all the teachers, and of course, all our members for the part participation. We are very happy with the engagement that this project has created in the association. Um, another thing that I want to say is that the communication circle of the association is already preparing something very exciting for the future. So if you want to join us and help us to build something even more amazing, please log in to Slack and follow and participate in our discussions over there. Uh, all members get the invitation link for Slack by email. And if you have any questions, you can send us a message and we can check this for you. Um, yes, well, the lecture today is about permaculture design and it will be presented by Dominic, who will show us some examples from his own designs. And Nick is currently the chair of the board of the association and he's also a biogas practitioner and enthusiast. And he has been going into the diploma process for the past years. And he will talk about it for us soon. And as soon as he gets his diploma, the diploma, he will be one of the first ones in Finland to hold one. That's very cool. Um, there will be a feedback form for you to fill up uh, at the end of the lecture. And this link will be posted on the chat here on YouTube and please check it out because your feel, all your feedbacks help us a lot. And you can write uh, questions in the chat for Nick at any time. Alexi will be there checking the, the messages and questions and me as well. Um, and there's no stupid question. So the more questions, the better. All right. And there will be some time at the end and during the lecture as well, I mean, there will be a, there will be some moments for questions during the lecture. Uh, and finally, the link to this lecture will be available here on YouTube for about one week from now. So you can also watch it later if you want. I guess that's it. I'll hand over to Dominic now. Okay. Thank you. Maria, thank you very much. And yes, uh, so this is the last lecture of the series of 12. And uh, thanks to everyone. Thanks to the team. Amazing job done. Uh, wow. <laughs> OK, so uh, today the lecture is about uh, permaculture design by example. I call it uh, 
a sneak peek into the parts of my portfolio for the Diploma in Applied Permaculture Design. Uh, I'm currently uh, in the diploma process. Uh, I have handed in 10 designs, the required 10 designs, and nine of them are already in, and I'm working on kind of upgrading the last ones and the last one. Okay, so uh, in, in permaculture design, we usually <laughs> always have some kind of observation or a survey phase. So, uh, Let's start, who is Dominic Chase? So I was born in 1977 in Germany, Bavaria. I have a diploma in brewing technology from Technical University of Berlin. Currently a business owner and the company is called Chase and Snow. We are about marketing and websites. I'm, as already mentioned, uh, since 2020. Uh, most of my friends call me Dom or Nick. Um, my personal ethics are kind of simple. I'm a vegetarian, animals shouldn't be harmed, and I have an everything is a life approach. Okay, uh, who am I with? I'm with Lumia. She's my wife. She's Finnish. She has a BA in marketing. She's uh, the co owner of Jason Snow. She's the chair of the Belkane Uritajat, and she is the treasurer of the Spare. Together we live at uh, Beyond Buckthorns. This is uh, in Laitikala. We are somewhere in the middle between Tampere, Lahti, and Hemilinna. Uh, Laitika is part of Belkade. We have about 1,600, 400 inhabitants there, and it doubles usually during the summertime. So there are a lot of monkeys around. A close by, to our place, there's a large strawberry farm, there's an organic cheese maker, berry wine producer, microbrewery, and lots of farmers. So, but really, where do you live? Uh, this is an aerial photo taken uh, by, from Google, and the white lines are the border. So it gives you a first impression uh, where we are. I have prepared a little video and I hope it doesn't break the system now. <laughs> so this is a shot of the main garden going upwards. Above the main garden is a stripe of a kind of multi-layer garden with a lot of plum trees and berry bushes. And then further above there is uh, the biogas shed this is also a diploma design and then there's uh, zone one experimental garden and then you see the house solar panels and further and further out the, on the right side the forest that uh, shades us kind of from the uh, winter winds or shades the house from the winter winds and then we take a spin, a 360. I hope it is not too fast. So on the right side coming in, you see the food forest, or the area that will be the food forest, and then a coppicing area. It's a locked forest, locked in 2015. The forest that you see there is our neighbor already. So it turns and turns and turns. This is the main road that we are connected to, the and then the orchard, again, the parts of the forest, and then we are already back to where we started. Okay, so some facts about Beyond Park Cerns. It's now three hectares. The main forest got locked in 2015, which was the biggest cultural clash so far I had in Finland. Uh, when I got told that the forest will be locked, I was like from the German Bavarian point of view, thinking of that some trees will be cut, <laughs> more like a continuous cut forest, but no, it was clear cut. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we moved in after that in 2016. Uh, we found a partial multi layer garden that we are extending at the moment. Uh, there is a huge diversity of berry bushes from sea buckthorns or sea berries to aronia. Uh, there are lots of wild raspberries. Uh, I prefer them to the, those that you can buy in the shops. There are mushrooms uh, grown in different spots. Uh, there are a lot of cantarelli around. Um, yes, there are microclimates. Uh, actually real cool ones where it is very hot uh, so really 
good microclimates partially. Uh, we have a Goivo, which uh, has potable water. We are connected to a one gigabit fiber optic synchronous internet. Uh, this is something we did, uh, found it like a um, company, and the company then dug the line and rented it out. Uh, we are living in Arinta Mamiya Stalo. It's from the 1950s. The main heating of that place is done with a mass on reopen. Okay. Uh, when you start with your diploma, something that you always often come by is the so-called river of life. This is something uh, a lot of persons, a lot of apprentices create for themselves. It's giving you like an overview of what has happened so far in your life and probably also a little bit of a direction. So uh, mine is kind of, uh, yeah, different probably. I, I switched uh, the, what's it called, chops, kind of the careers. So uh, I started as kind of event manager, booking manager. I had two record contracts, one with a record label in New York. Then uh, thought of that I can go deeper into brewing technology, started brewing technology in Berlin. And during the time I became a Linux administrator. Uh, as then met Lumia, we went to Ireland. I was a quality coach there. Then I married Lumia. I got into physical computing. Uh, I had my own hack space. And then 2014, a lot of things happened simultaneously. I got into biogas, I got into permaculture, I got into sociocracy, and I had one of the most interesting exhibitions I have ever been in. And we moved to Finland, we created Beyond Buckshorns, created the company, and there are hopefully a lot of exciting uh, things still happening or going to happen. Okay, so what does the river of life gave me or give you when you do that? It gives you patterns, patterns of your life. So there are a lot of definitions around what patterns are. I have two up here. So the patterns I found uh, from my life is uh, I always have been like a project manager. I always have been a designer for websites, T-shirts, flyers, whatever. I usually have diversity in the projects that I do. So it's not, not the same kind of all over again. Uh, I build things from scratch. I dive fast and deep. That's how I learn best. I learn best alone. Uh, I build upon what I already know and integrate new stuff. And I'm usually creative, fearless, and spontaneous. And I have a one sentence here as food for thought. How complex could patterns be before humans don't recognize them as such? OK, so but with all this information that we are having, we got, we have to do something. So data has to become intelligence. And what you see here is a so-called SWOC. It's for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, challenges. And I put the things that I found in these. There are, of course, more, but I couldn't show them all here. It's not possible. Uh, you see that the cultural differences are marked. Yeah, it's something really challenging for me. It's also my, uh, one of my weaknesses is my scanner personality. I start a lot of projects at the same time, and then all the knowledge scatters around. <laughs> so, OK, we have more. We have the limits and helps. Limits and helps it comes from Luby's uh, design web, uh, where she has uh, separate points for those two. I uh, usually use them in one point and then divide into the limits and helps. So Lumia is always huge help for me, all kinds of. So thank you very much, Lumia. Uh, also the people from all social zones, from friends to people that I don't know yet. And of course, like it's always the same. You sometimes really don't know where the help is and where the limits are. Uh, principles is also like a bread and butter tool in permaculture design. Uh, what you see here are those that are four of the 
10 that were defined by Slay and Mollison. So I, I actually love those four. Each element performs many functions. Each important function is supported by multiple elements, efficient energy planning, and the edge effect. So also food for thought. Uh, usually when we see the principles, we only see home grains, the 12, but there are more. There's Slay and Mollison uh, with 10, and then there's Mollison with 5. So this gives us 27 relevant principles. So there's more than just home grain. Okay, what is the conclusion if I like to step into a design? The conclusion is that I could not really run a project where I uh, have people around that don't speak English. Uh, it won't work. I can't have a translator running around all the time and it will be a huge hassle for me. And then also I cannot lift heavy weights. So uh, there's a physical limit and the conclusion is to not uh, do that or get help. Uh, for me, uh, in the diploma, I don't really want to go for one design. That's for me not diverse enough. Uh, one design doesn't also not, doesn't make sure that I learn enough. And one important point is that the whole site, Beyond Box Zones, is under holistic management. So I cannot just do whatever I want to without asking Lumia. So it's not going like I'm building this building somewhere and then come to Lumia and say, hey, the building is ready. And, uh, <laughs> and she would probably say, uh, yeah, fine. Uh, no, it, it, it doesn't work that way. So I have to uh, ask before and discuss things, what I want to do. I got a lot of ideas, uh, brainstorming, mind map, uh, things that uh, I like to do, some things that are need driven. Uh, and I had these huge list of like 25 uh, possible designs and I narrowed it down to 10 designs. So on the left are the social designs and on the right are the land-based designs. Nearly 50-50. Um, the three that are marked with these dots are uh, happened by coincidence. They were not planned for, and I actually let a little bit space for that to happen. So the permapohat is the social design that you're currently in. Then templating a workshop, it's a biogas workshop that I can just uh, pull the files and run the workshop again. The Permablitz Design Camp, that's a combination of a DAL code with a crash course in designing. Uh, the Perma Cafe is an upgrade to the World Cafe, which I'm really thankful that the Permaculture Association let me run that and try that. Um, then the Biogas Shed, uh, this is a retrofitting of an old barn uh, that houses uh, my biogas plant, which is the Jean Luc. So there is another design introducing the Jean Luc. Uh, then that is the Centropia Borealis. This is a food and wood production system. And then Ritva's permaculture garden, uh, garden design for my uh, friend Ritva. Uh, it's actually, she, with, with her, I have uh, the Finn tandem going. Uh, I speak Finnish while she learns German. Uh, very good, interesting system. Uh, then catching the rain, rainwater catchment. This design is one of the designs that is used by my tutor, Katrina, to show others how a design should be. Uh, and then I have the permaculture pocket stencil template, uh, which is something out of the ordinary. I'm not quite sure where I should put it. Uh, probably the senior tutor will then just tell me where to put it. Okay, so uh i have a question for you guys uh permaculture is the subject of design who said that any idea in the chat or maria alexis do you have any idea well you said that? Uh, no, no, that's that's no. <laughs> uh, no, definitely not. Okay, uh, Alexis, any idea? Completely clueless. I'm sorry. Okay, this is written in the designer's manual. It's from Mollison. Okay, I got another one. Oh, huh? wait. Everyone is a designer. 
Any idea? Malison? <laughs> uh, no, it, it was here uh, in, in a permapuhat. Okay, uh, that's from Luby McNamara. Okay, and the last one. Have you ever heard? Hmm? Have you ever heard form follows function? No, I haven't, and I'm not sure if I understand what it means. Okay, no worries. Uh, this is one of the oldest uh, phrases about design. It's from the 19th century, somewhere 1850s. Okay, so let's dive into uh, the permapoet design. This is the one that you are in at the moment. So, um, somehow I have. Okay, so what you see here is the Go Satimat uh, design process with the tool chain. So Go Satimat is a quite simple design process. It's called Swishens, survey, analysis, design, implementation, maintenance, evaluation, and tweak. Uh, there's a, a last step, it's the reflection, which is not in the design process itself. This is something that's required uh, for the diploma. And below the actual process, you see the tool chain that I'm using. And I start with the ethics. So I define a vision and say, how's Earth care done? So the vision is bringing the knowledge of permaculture to as many people as possible so they can take care of the Earth. And people care is done by learning the things I'm interested. In. So yeah, it's a zone zero zero design, encouraging others to step forward to hold a lecture. So it's now going outwards in the social zones, bringing permaculture and permaculture related topics to the members of the Finnish Permaculture Association and beyond. And a fair share is quite simple. I get the knowledge I want, while others get the lectures they want, while others get paid for holding a lecture. <laughs> or let's call it a win, win, win. <laughs> okay, so with the vision, I step into survey. And what I did over the last two or not, not completely two years, I observe what is happening in other associations and the Finnish Permaculture Association is connected to the UPN, also partially to Social Cruci for All. And within those different circles, there are different permaculture associations. And uh, when I sat at the, one of the, uh, uh, meetings at SOFA, the permaculture circle of SOFA. Uh, I had uh, guys from the British Permaculture Association and when COVID hit us, they were really kind of freaking out so that we have to do something now because that meant for them they are losing a lot of money. Okay, so yes, uh, it's mainly observation. And then I went into analysis with a lot of information. And what I did uh, was uh, first of a PMI of the different online formats. And this is the one that you see on the right. So um, there are different formats that we could do, like one lecture, a conference, a panel discussion. And then I valued them, valued them like plus, minus, and what's interesting. And I did the same for the possible softwares that are around. I then drove a SWOC uh, for, from the association's perspective so that I can see actually what are we are kind of, where, where are strengths, where are weaknesses, uh, what opportunities and challenges will be ahead of us if we go on. And then I put this also into smart goals, limits and helps again, and uh, the home grants principles. Uh, home grants principles are from my perspective so far the better ones when it comes to social design. Um, I got into designing, so you see the different zones, like uh, zone zero, zero, uh, I in the middle, and then zone zero, Lumia, then friends, then colleagues, then members, and then all Finnish people and everyone interested. And so I was then formulating a concept, teachers and lecturers using the social zones and also uh, approval of budget and also, of course, green lighting. Uh, from the, the comms circle that this is something we could do. 
And then from that, uh, I created an implementation list. And the implementation list is split in three parts. So what do we what 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 was needed before, like a logo or uh, like who's doing what? And then we had a list for per lecture and then what's necessary afterwards. And uh, this design is kind of a designer's dream because it's a low or no maintenance system. So it really has nothing there. Uh, evaluation happened uh, in the feedback form that every participant could always, for all the lectures, fill in. And it was really like uh, getting the most stars all the time. And uh, as you can see, there, there are a lot of uh, uh, feedback from participants who really liked it. Uh, there was also a feedback session with the team and then also feedback from teachers. And I have a small image here. Uh, it's a screenshot from how YouTube looks from the YouTube studio perspective of the association. And as you can see, we have some numbers here. So the most interesting was the Permaboet of the Metzebudra by Anton Nordquist. It has nearly 1,000 views, and it had 100 views while it was live. Uh, but the others also did very well. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how much views we have here. And yeah, really cool. Uh, from the uh, first six lessons to the second, to the Permabohet extent, we then tweaked it. So it's now multiple hosts per session. It's not going forth and back between Zoom and Jitsi and YouTube. It's just Jitsi and YouTube. Uh, and the members have to be a member one day before. There was a lot of stress for, for Lumia. And I'm really thankful for, for Lumia here. She did all this, this heavy lifting, like writing, updating the members directory, and then sending the link out to the members and answering members who couldn't find the link. So yeah, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and then, of course, the, the, the workload was better delegated in the uh, second version of it. Uh, the, the design itself, uh, I mean, is, is done here. But uh, then in the diploma, you're required to have a reflection going. So what you see on the right is illustration as a corp cycle. And basically, all these kinds of uh, design processes are based on something like this. So you see something, you watch it, you think about it, you conceptualize it, then you are doing something and you might be feeling great about it. And then you watch what you have done and you think about it, conceptualize it. And so this kind of uh, cycle could run forever. So when you reach tweak uh, phase, you start from the beginning until you reach tweak again and uh, you run this if you want to forever. Okay. Uh... Um, should we should we do some question and answers here? Are there any questions so far about this the social design? No, no questions. Um, I just have a comment. Uh, okay. Can I? Yeah, please. I uh, well, it's a comment and a question actually. Did you okay. think about the design before? Like when you had the idea about the permaculet, or or were you like fitting one to the other in the process? Does it make sense? Uh, it's like a, it's sometimes uh, backtracing steps. It 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 really depends. Sometimes you have a really great idea and you subconsciously designed it correctly. Like you went subconsciously through all the phases and then suddenly had the design. I mean, this is like what happened with, uh, I, I was watching what, what the others were doing for, for a kind of time. And then also saw that uh, the, the numbers of the members were steadily declining because the association was for a year and a half just turning around itself and we didn't really produce anything uh, interesting. 
And so there are two things that come together here. But I, I had to run all the kinds of, I had to gather all the information, the analysis, like uh, what's out there in software we could use. For example, uh, uh, I once had a meeting with Erki and then he used this Go meeting. So I was like, ah, that's an interesting software. Let's see if this is useful for us. And I put it into the PMI. Does this answer your question? Yes, yes. Thank you. I do have a question a bit more broad, Nick, myself. OK. It's regarding the whole design. For someone that would like to follow in your in your steps in a, in a way, someone that is very interested to get the diploma, yeah. uh, do you have like a, a really simple tip for the to to kind of achieve this? Yeah, I have a I have a, a tips or what I found works best at the end of the whole thing. Some conclusions about it. Uh, I never really answer it until we come to the end. So can can you keep your question to the end? Okay, thank you. Okay, if there are uh, no more questions, then we go for the next one. No more questions. Okay, thank you. So the next one is land-based. And if you look at the GoSatimat process and the tool chain compared to the social design, there are a lot more tools in there. So the thing is, this is a bigger design than the other one was. So there's a lot more going on in the observation fair in the survey phase. OK. Uh, Click here. So first, I define the vision again. And it's in Earthcare, I would like to create abundance, uh, a lot of apples for eating raw. I really love apple and apple juice, especially, um, but also for cooking. And then uh, also, this design should sequester carbon. Uh, people care. I'd love to have a place for my wife and I, so I can walk through it and uh, be happy, but also for family, friends, and visitors to enjoy. The fair share is defined by sharing apples and berry harvests with family and friends. So during the harvest season, uh, you're always invited to come to Beyond Buckshorns and help with harvest. And of course, there will be fair share for this. Uh, yes, and then also kind of sharing this design with the public. That is something that is in all the designs. I share all my diploma designs with the public. I think this is something necessary to do, uh, being open about what I'm doing. OK. Survey. Uh, observation. Uh, so we came to the place in 2016. And since that, I'm observing the whole place. I go out uh, kind of every day, probably not that much if it's too much rain. <laughs> uh, but yes, all, all over all the seasons, observing and walking around and just uh, laying in their garden and listening to uh, the birds or the animals in general. And Okay, I, I hear the cars also the driving by. It's it's really nice to be there and feel the soil be there. Uh, for this particular design, I run a client interview, uh, and this is something I really recommend to do. Uh, you're interviewing yourself or your partner, <laughs> and it kind of makes sense because you have two roles here when you design for yourself. Uh, it's like you're, you are this, the designer and then the person you're designing for. And if you kind of have two different hats on, it sometimes makes sense to take these two different perspectives. Um, I collected climate data, open source data, of course, from the station at Hattola, uh, it's, uh, towards Hermenlinna. So it's the closest public uh, station where I can get climate data from. I'm on the way of uh, building my own climate uh, station, but this will take some more time. Uh, I have a ba base map 
there are zones, there are sectors, there's a contour profile, there's budget, and there is limits and helps. So let's step into this in more detail. So this is where we are. You already have seen the photo. Uh, take the uh, Google image away, and what we see is the contour profile. Uh, if you are uh, familiar with Yeoman scale of permanence, so it goes from the left to the right. The most left is more permanent, and the most right is less permanent. So it's easier to change the soil than it is than to change the road and access. It's yeah, soil is the easiest. And what you see here is basically kind of the landscape, which you have to imagine out of the picture, of course. Uh, these gray, dark gray lines are the driveways. So we are connected to the main road. And then there is a road that, uh, wait. So this is the uh, entry point to the driveway. Then uh, this road here goes to uh, the sauna. And this here kind of, or this whole thing goes through the forest. Okay. Uh, sector, you see the white life is kind of all over the place. So there are lynx, there are deer, there are rapids, and there is Sopicoira. And the Sopicoira is kind of the weirdest of all because he shits in the middle of the road. Like he's kind of, <laughs> he's not going to the forest and shitting there. No, he's shitting in the middle of the road. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the fire, of course, from the forest, then uh, winter and summer sun and winter and summer wind. And then also the noise from the Tampere and Lachten deer and from our neighbors and their field. Um, the picture again, and now please have a look at the Quisman Tia Yoenso Tia intersection. This is uh, zone three, uh, and we are now going into that zone. So this is the detail view. So there is a row of a uh, kind of uh, trees and uh, berry bushes. And this was used as a garden. So it's far away from the house. If you see the house, the zone zero kind of, it, it's, a, it's a long walk to get there and you have to walk kind of over a hill. Uh, so this was used as main garden and we, this is one of the first things we stopped. Uh, so no more uh, potatoes in uh, silt soil uh, and yeah, no more gardening here. Uh, this is how it looked, mm, like it's um, April, uh, April or May 2018. And uh, one of my observations was this. This is something that's already there. So you see the apple tree on the left, which has about 5, 5.2 meters. And then a, a, a female sea buckthorn besides that, 5.5. And then the male sea buckthorns with 6.5 meters. And in between the apple tree and the female sea buckthorn, you have, uh, you have an aronia bush. So the, what you see here is the, what I found interesting is the spacing. So it's 2.5 meters so about between the female sea buckthorn and the apple tree. And the apple usually carries a lot of apples. So for me, this was kind of like, an, yeah, this is something I'd like to replicate. Um, this is a more recent aerial photo uh, of the place. Uh, what I want you to remember is the Rosu Canina in the left corner of the picture, and then the Salix, the willows, in the lower right corner, and the uh, sea buxons at the upper right corner. And what I have here is a contour line profile of that area, and it's unfortunately 90 degrees turned around. So the highest point that you see on the right, this is uh, the Rosu Canina. 
And the lowest point on the top are the willows. And the lowest point on the bottom, this is uh, the seed buckthorn. So you can see we have a little bit of a uh, slope here. So with, of course, there's more information. Uh, I cannot squeeze all into this presentation. Uh, it would take simply too long. Uh, what I ran or what I got from the client interview is that I want to have a lot of apple juice. So I really like apple juice. And if I could, I would drink about two to three liters of apple juice a week. And if you calculate that backwards to how many uh, apples that would be, then we come to about 200 kilos of apples. If we then factor in the number that uh, a moderate number that a tree uh, will have uh, between 30 to 40 uh, kilo uh, per tree, I mean, it's, it's a low number, I know. Uh, um, then uh, with all the others demands, like making cider, giving away apples, having apples for eating through the year, I end up with 12 apples. And from the 12 apples, uh, which are then kind of high yielding trees, uh, you have to, or I found, the, or I had to read that, that there is nutrition demand for those trees. And then I had to think about kind of, or find out what, uh, where could these nutritions come from? And it's especially about nitrogen. So where, where can I get nitrogen from? And there are, uh, different species around that can fix nitrogen and sea buckthorns is actually really good in that. So uh, it forms nodules uh, with uh, what is it called um, actinomycetes. So it's actinorytial, it's the uh, Frankia microorganism. Um, and we get a lot actually of nitrogen uh, per year. Unfortunately, all these numbers are calculated in hectare or in, in kilograms per hectare. So I had to do a, run a backwards calculation to get it down to, to one tree or one bush. Took me some time. Uh, I did the same for uh, the, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, Lepta. Uh, I don't know the English name at the moment. <laughs> So I calculated that for that tree and then also for willows. And this was kind of interesting. Uh, Joshua Finch from uh, Little Club pointed to me in an uh, Instagram post that actually willows are nitrogen fixers. And I was like, no way. And then I uh, dove into the uh, kind of scientific uh, studies. And yeah, it's true they have uh, nitrogen fixers on the stem. So uh, they do fix nitrogen, not as much as the buxons would do, but they do. Okay, so I also have a flow map here. I took soil samples, I created function system elements. I need to know for the functions, what elements I have to put in. And of course the principles are always there. Principles are bread and butter. And I get a lot of ideas. And what I first came up with was a placement of elements. So uh, how many trees I could space in, how many uh, high yielding trees, and how many sea buckthorns. And uh, Lumia also wanted to have a better uh, pear tree. And from that, I came to the design map. And this is the proposed design map, how it should, should look like. So from that, uh, I created an implementation list. I walked in there with an A-frame. I got me some uh, furrows uh, so that I can find things easier and see things easier. Uh, I uh, grafted some apple trees, not all of them worked. Uh, I transplanted plum trees. Uh, I layered gooseberries and currants for bushes. I bought sea buckthorns. Uh, I have some sea buckthorns from seeds. So. So ground cover, uh, Lumia is usually sowing, uh, or yeah, she's sowing, or had, no. Uh, I think uh, she, she was sowing, um, 
Kukka. What's the English word for that? Uh, I have to come back to flowers. Yes, flowers. And then I create a maintenance plan, how these will look like. So at one point, I have to prune trees. I have to cut trees. I have to prune bushes, check for animal damage, check growth, harvest. I use the input, output analysis here for evaluation to see how the systems will uh, fly into each other or work together. I also checked if the budget uh, I didn't overstep the budget. And then also what I couldn't do, for example, for this design, I couldn't uh, go in with the excavator and dig because an excavator costs a lot of money. And I have a lot of other places that need an excavator, but the other designs are not that far that are this one. So it has to wait until I can rent the excavator for all the other designs, and then it will be done. So this is design is currently <clears throat> this design is currently in the tweak phase. So th this is the one that's not completely done and not fully documented yet. Okay, I took a small video some days ago. You see the furrows. You see uh, the trees. They're housed in a metal mesh. It's actually it works against uh, the rabbits. Okay, not so good against it here. Uh, in between the furrows, you see the spaces where my mother-in-law is gardening and she's very happy to be able to garden there. So I'm happy sh that she's happy. Okay, so we are now at the end of this design. Uh, any questions? Oh, wait. Uh, now I clicked. I do, actually. Sorry, I have to go back to the... Uh, yeah. Please. So uh, regarding this design, I mean, it's quite a sizable, it's quite sizable, the place you choose to use for the design. Is there a certain uh, limit to, let's say, how small or big or it's the... You think, uh, you, you mean in the diploma, how big, how small? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, also a good question. I also like to keep it for the last stage. Okay, so I have to go back to the presentation. Uh, are there any other questions, Maria, or from the chat? Is there... No, I don't have any questions, and I cannot see any. I don't see any questions on the chat as well. Okay, so I share my screen again. I do have another question. Oh, please, yes. It, would there be another type of tree you would like to introduce there? The one that you haven't put to? Uh, I was thinking for some time about nut trees, but I have other locations for nut trees. So the uh, hazelnuts are at a different spot, and uh, Yellowbachne is on a different spot. Um, I mean, the thing is, uh, the the road, uh, the willow and uh, Bervalepes there. Uh, this is kind of sort of as a coppicing area. So yeah, probably I could try to have a birch there and try to copy or copies birch would be nice. Um, better uh, firewood than the willow, of course. Uh, mm, I, I'd love to have a. Uh, uh, a hardy uh, peach tree. Uh, I mean, I have one, but they are not doing that well. So it's probably on the limit what's possible. Uh, but others that, that are there, no. Hardy kiwi as well? I have them at a different spot. Uh, they, they, I mean, yeah, for climbers, why not? But I. I want to wait until the apple trees are a little bit more mature and something could climb up. OK, thank you. OK, you're welcome. Or do you have a recommendation what I should put there? I'm a fan of uh, sour cherries. They're super hardy. 
Yeah. Do they taste really good as juice or making wine as well? Uh, there are wild cherries there, kind of. They are, I, mean, I have two, or a lot of cherry trees. And these are, uh, it's, um, I haven't talked about it, sorry. There are cherry trees, they form a line in, in the front before the road. All right. So, so how about mulberry? Uh, yeah, I have a mulberry. Didn't come through the winter. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm not quite sure who up at 61 North has really tested mulberries in the harsh winter with minus, minus 30, 35 degrees. Not quite sure who's there. So for me, it didn't work. And this was already kind of advertised as a winter hardy one. Probably on a on a different spot. Like uh, I mean, this this area is kind of shaded for a long time from the sun, because the forest is kind of in the south south southwest. So uh, there's a lot of snow still in the winter there. It's it's probably not really the best place for such a plant. And I have chosen the. Uh, Antonovka, because it's one of the winter hardiest rootstocks that there are. There so. is a question from Erki asking how about bushes, guilds? Uh, there's currants, there is aronia, but I'm not going into planting any kind of like uh, what we would do in uh, in a forest garden. That's, that's not what's what's going to happen there that much. I mean, there, there are things that are deliberately planted there in for chop and drop or something like that. So there is comfrey there. I think every apple tree has some like comfrey around them. And there, uh, there are some uh, other roots, but uh, not deliberately. I mean, what's there is there. There is a lot of stuff already as vegetation. So I don't want to go for something that costs me a lot of time and is not really necessary. I mean, there's clover a lot and there are dandelions all over the place. And it's not for me to go there and harvest kind of uh, hosta or something like that. I mean, I have other places where I do that. Okay, did this uh, answer your question? No, so didn't go for that. If there is any questions, it's about now, or I think, Nick, you can keep going and we'll see a bit more at the end. Yeah. Okay, I'll share my screen again. So, uh, let's, uh, so we are here. So, uh, this is a tool that I'm using for some time. It's called the Regenerative Continuum. It's a tool that lets you evaluate your life, but also if something is regenerative, sustainable, or degenerative. So you have the scale here on the left, it's regenerative. In the middle, it's sustainable. And on the right, it's degenerative. And sustainable is just the tipping point, what is at least needed. Uh, so I checked or like went back and thought about my life uh, before 2016, before uh, I was living in a city, in a big city in the rural in Germany, five million cramped in a small space. So we were eating organic and for transportation, bicycle walking, but also train, tram and flight uh, to Finland and back, no long distance or only once a year. Uh, then I was in art, upcycling, uh, living, heating, not completely have an influence on that. If you're renting energy, of course you have. So we had green energy. And of course the city life, there's eating out where organic restaurants are not that, weren't that many around. Uh, going to the opera, kind of uses up a lot of energy, cinema even more to produce movies. This is like, <laughs> 
totally degenerative, also the same with parties. Um, and compared to how it is now, it's a lot more on the green side. So I mean, we eat organic, but also Finnish. Then we have our own planted stuff and the foraged. For transportation, it's bike. Now we have a car and the bus and the plane still going to Germany with its brother, mother, uh, parents generally. Then firewood is different now. It's firewood, solar panels, biogas, passive air heating, still watching movies or eating out. But now it's like archery or swimming. So regenerative, uh, good for my health. Yeah. OK. So now, what have I learned so far? Permaculture design is context sensitive. What, what you are going to design for is what you need to know or to learn. So you, you need to have the kind of uh, be committed to learning if you don't know the stuff. If you want to design a food forest, your knowledge will look different than when you create an event or uh, something other in the social realm. But what's similar to all of them, and it always comes back to, is earth care, people care, and the limits of resources, or it's now called the fair share. Uh, it always comes back to the principles, and I really prefer the 27, not just Holmgren's. Uh, from the perspective of all the different, uh, all the different uh, design processes I have tried, Luby is the one. The Luby's design web is the one that reflects reality the most. So uh, what I haven't tried yet is uh, Whitfield's process, with uh, Whitefield's process, which looks pretty promising. It's in his book uh, described. So I haven't tried that one yet. And I also like to try what uh, Joshua described in his lecture last week. This also looked very interesting for me. So uh, using the principles as a design process. Um, and of course, there's only that much that you can learn in a given amount of time. The diploma is not a kind of doctoral or postdoctoral thesis. It's a diploma, nothing more, nothing less. So yeah, you can overdo it, definitely. Uh, for similar context, templating the workflow works. So if you're uh, designing land or designing social and you have the experience of what works best, it might work best in the next design you do. So you can fall back to what you have already learned and done. It's like a template or like a pattern if you want so. Uh, for the diploma itself, I suggest that you make your designs gradually more complex until you reach the point where you're comfortable for a full site design. So I wouldn't suggest to start with a full site design uh, if you're not an experienced designer. For me, there, there, there's 10 designs in diploma. They are very well thought of, like that you gradually make them bigger and more complex and learn while you go. So this, this is the nice part. You know, you have your tutor, and your tutor gives you feedback on what you are doing. And you learn from that. So yeah, it's, it's a very nice process, actually. So and one thing, like always, permaculture is the subject of design, like Mollison said. So if you are not designing, it's not permaculture. OK, so yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, this is some just informational stuff. Uh, all their designs, expect the last one, are online. There are also a little bit more that uh, haven't made it into the portfolio, but are still online. Generally, go to Beyond Buxerns if you find out more about the place, about Lumia and me. And I have some courses upcoming, so a little bit of advertisement. So in August, there will be the Nordic Permaculture Festival held in Sweden. So the website is already up. You can check it. And after that, we will have a Perma Blitz design camp probably running here. So the same what we did last year. And then soon, like, uh, I don't know, maybe in the next two to three weeks, we have a forest garden, multi-layer garden, Talcot for planting uh, in zone one. 
And at the beginning of September, end of August, there will be a biogas workshop. And then there should be also an introduction to permaculture, which is not yet decided. And there will be also a talk on building a composting toilet closer to the house. OK, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, OK, maybe I can put my video again as well. Thank you so much for your lecture. Um, now I, it just came to my mind that Alexi made a question for you and, and you promised to answer later. I'm not yeah. sure if that was answered. Alexis, your two questions. Uh, one, one of them was actually answered, but the other one is was regarding for the, um, the earth care design regarding the land. Uh, is there any size that no. is required? No. no. As long as the design is made, it doesn't matter. The, the important part is the implementation. It, it, it must be an implemented design. It should not be just on the paper, like a theory. It should be implemented. OK, awesome. Thank you. That answers my last question. And if, if you have this kind of uh, balcony garden, or uh, I mean, this, this could be a high intensive system kind of so yeah why not so, I mean, yeah so you're telling that the the design phase is not only solely on land it could be applied to let's say a front yard in the city or a backyard or a oh backyard. yeah definitely yeah interesting thank you that's even better Okay, so if there are no more questions, then All right, I don't think we have more questions unless Alexi has more. I don't have any questions. It was really nice to see your, your designs. A really interesting process. And to be honest, it's kind of kind of amazing that you're so much into tools and uh, like you have so many things going on at the same time, like different tools and systems. And even in the beginning, when you were introducing yourself, you kind of made a made a design just to introduce yourself as well. And that was really nice. Yeah, that's that's why it is two and a half designs. <laughs> True. Yeah, it makes yeah. total sense. Uh, okay. Well, um, I, I just posted on the chat the link for the feedback form. So we really ask uh, everyone to fill up there so we can have some feedback. And what else do we need to say? Uh, well, I think that the uh, Permaput is now, with the last session, kind of closed. So uh, Comms is working on something new. And again, if you want to join in Slack, please do. Uh, there will be something exciting coming up, probably even two things. So yes, please join. More hands make things go easier. Awesome. You said everything. Thank you. OK. Thank you for having me. And then, yeah. Bye-bye. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.